Hey folks, Sam from SK Coffee here, and today we're talking about espresso, specifically kind of the, the function, the dialing in, as well as just basically giving you, the SK community, an insight into how I, Sam, am trying to learn the ropes, so to speak. Now, you're probably wondering, Sam, why does SK Coffee have all this uh, equipment if you don't have a cafe? Because um, it's certainly not my personal uh, espresso machine and beautiful espresso grinder. Hint, we are opening a coffee bar very soon. This video is going to come out in late September, and we should have a coffee bar by mid-November of 2020. Uh, very exciting. So this is all um, part of my... Uh, um, uh, transition and exploration into becoming a professional barista and really learning the ropes. So there you go. We're starting our coffee bar with a small single group Linea Mini by La Marzocco. La Marzocco is one of the industry standard um, espresso machines. You've definitely seen the iconic shape all over in two, three group, one group, whatever. What that means, uh, one group, is literally one group head. So that's this thing right here. That's actually below, it, it's, this is kind of, I believe this is the housing of the one of the boilers. It's a double boiler system. One of the boilers uh, controls this little like kind of tea hot water spout as well as of course the milk frother. Um, then the other boiler has to do with the portafilter and the group head. Um, so uh, there's that. Um, beautiful machine. Um, been able to pull quite good shots and it's really like professional grade. This is made for the home, frankly, a single group. It's an expensive home, home machine, but it's built with the same quality and essentially the same materials as the two group Linea Classic. Um, so we are very fortunate and, and excited to be starting the coffee bar with this. Uh, single group, um, we are not at first expecting a ton of traffic for espresso specifically. So this will really give us a chance to hone that craft and focus on one drink at a time as we expand and grow. Um, then over here we have the Malkönig E65S. This is a pretty new machine actually. I believe we might be the first um, coffee bar to have this in the Twin Cities. Here, here in Minnesota. Um, it is essentially, I believe, replacing the Malkunig K30, which is an iconic um, uh, espresso grinder. I believe it was used in a lot of the uh, World Barista Championships, US Barista Championships, but this is replacing that beautiful uh, little screen here. You can program all sorts of stuff. I currently, because I'm still sort of calibrating our program and essentially filtering through all of our various single origin coffees, I am not programming a timed um, uh, grind, which you can do. So every time it's consistent relatively, you know, with, within a 0.2 gram um, um, variance. Uh, so, so right now I'm just doing kind of the, the infinity mode or something, right? So it's just continuous and then I weigh and I'm, you know, scooping out. So, uh, anyways, fantastic machine. It can grind about 18 grams of coffee in like three seconds, depending on, on the coffee. It's fantastic. So a little bit about the espresso program we're trying to build at the SK coffee bar. We are going to do entirely single origin coffee at our coffee bar. That's in our small batch brew. That'll be in our espresso, as well as our pour overs, which will be left for our, our pour over program will be entirely um, our like more, you know, premium, uh, super small lot coffees, things like our Gesha or our Tabi Natural or coffee of the like. So. What's unique about our espresso program is that we are focusing on single origin. Most espresso programs around the country uh, will have at least a blend or two uh, to maintain consistency, and that is, that is important to many. For us, <clears throat> our coffee bar is going to be meant as 
a gateway and, and an entry point into the larger environment of experience and discovery for coffee in general. And we are extremely coffee focused, producer focused, and we're really trying to bring you closer to origin. Um, beautiful coffee effortlessly is our sort of internal mantra at the moment, as well as coffee is the hero. These are all kind of in the same uh, general area of philosophy. So this will be very unique. We'll be we'll be switching, you know, our single origin once a, once a week, maybe twice a month. We're not entirely sure, but it will be uh, different coffees featured on our espresso bar, and that'll show you just the immense possibilities, as well as seeing how a you know a this uh, Peruvian cooperative coffee that we have in here, how it acts as a small batch as well as a, as a as an espresso shot these are very different flavor profiles and sometimes we may even do a coffee a more premium coffee like our tabi natural both in pour over small batch as well as espresso and it works fabulously as espresso so we're going to find some really amazing and new flavor possibilities as we explore here so I'm just gonna pull a couple shots here and we'll maybe play with, we'll do two recipes and just see uh, how different the flavor experience can be. Of course, you'll have to trust me and then you'll have to come into the coffee bar to experience it yourself. I'm not gonna go into much theory about dialing in uh, because I am still learning this and I am nowhere near an expert, um, but I thought it would be kind of fun for you to see me even you know somewhat struggle through this because espresso is a is a somewhat complicated yet simple process it's complicated because minute uh, changes in how you tamp what your dose is how hot the water is what your ratio is what your brew time which is usually connected to the grind level as well as dose um, etc and, and ratio um, so just to recap all of those factors, you have time, which is essentially the brew time from the time you activate the paddle, right, the, the group head, to the time you stop it, and that is your brew time. Now that is something to consider because it can be an indicator for other things. It can be also an indicator for quality but it is a byproduct of these other factors, which namely are dose, how much coffee you're putting into the portafilter uh, basket, the ratio, which is how much brew water to coffee or brew, um, essentially drink weight, uh, because you're not measuring the actual weight of all the water because there is retention in there. So let me just say that simply. Ratio is the ratio between the dose that you've put into your portafilter basket to the finished drink volume or uh, weight, right? So we're doing everything by weight here. It's the most accurate. And we can talk about that another time. The third thing is the grind level, right? The grind setting. So finer, coarser. Generally, as you know, all espresso is, is ground very finely, but that finite or that that fine grind is where things get really um, interesting and intricate. The smallest of changes can change your uh, brew time and your extraction and experience. So here we go. I'm going to do a ratio that I've been doing, which is roughly, I believe, uh, about 1 to 2.25 or 1 to 2.3. We're trying to as, as I've mentioned, express and showcase the, the various flavor potentials between each coffee. So we're just gonna aim for a little bit more well-balanced sort of mellow shot that, that has some clarity to it. So one to two, one to 2.5, one to three, maybe even a, uh, sorry, not one to three, one to 2.3, we may even go as far as one to 2.5. So we're going to start with this. I'm going to do 17.5 grams of coffee in with, uh, with uh, about a 38 to 39 um, gram finished product. 
So we're gonna take that, we're gonna take that uh, Porta filter. There's the mantra in the world, it's clean, dry, and hot. I don't exactly remember what order that is, but you essentially want it to be clean. So very little ground, no grounds in there. Dry, because there's this thing I'm learning called, uh, it's essentially where water is attracted to water. And so if you have water left in here, as the group head is, is activated, it will attract to the water and it could produce channeling, which will be an uneven extraction, etc. And then uh, hot, I'm not entirely sure why, but I believe that it just helps with temperature differentials and maintaining a consistent temperature all the way through the extraction process. So we wanna zero out that, that, that portafilter and keep this here, go to grind. So let's see here. That's about 18.2, so I'm a little over. Uh, there we go. 17.7, you can kind of, um, there's a margin of error, there's 17.5 right there. There's a margin of error here between, uh, basically it's like 0.2 grams, give or take, from your your hoped dosage, okay? So 17.5, you can go 17.7, 17.3 give or take, but you want to try and hit that right on the money. Um, and then the, the margin of error for finished weight is roughly two grams, just because it's a larger um, measurement. So what you want to try and do now is distribute the coffee grounds here. So instead of doing this finger thing, which actually just, there, there's kind of clumping here, right? Especially since I scooped that. There's fancy distribution tools, which are kind of expensive, and Barista Hustle actually has found that they did a, they did a pretty robust study and found that the palm tamp, palm tap like that, you know, you might wanna just do that a little bit, but palm tamp like that helps distribute across that just as well as a distribution tool. Then you take that tamper and you go down. I have also, been toying with another uh, another method, which I can show you. Um, so then you just kind of clean that, um, put it in. Then we use another little scale that's uh, waterproof and smaller so it can fit underneath there. And it's zeroed out and we go. I start the time when the, when the actual pump is activated. So again, this is kind of fun because we're seeing just how potentially uh, good or bad these drinks that Sam makes are. It looks like this is actually flooding quite a bit, so Sam did not do very well on this uh, drink here. So that was 20 seconds. We wanna try and aim for like 25 to 30. So something is suggesting to me that there's probably channeling. I'm not gonna change the grind setting yet, so I'm gonna try that again, retamp it, um, and, I'll, and I'll show you this other method I've been playing with. So that was 42 at 20 seconds. That's a really fast shot, probably not gonna taste great. But this is that, this is that 42 second shot. Uh, the great James Hoffman, barista uh, world champion, as well as owner and founder of Square Mile out in London has a debate about stirring, and you can go listen to that, but I, I, you know, people have their own theories, and I like the idea of stirring this in because the crema of the espresso is essentially just like trapped gases and stuff. So more fresh coffee is gonna have a little bit more crema than older coffee. Um, so if you wanna mix all that in, there you go. I'm just gonna try this 42 second shot, we'll see. So, it's sour. It's not good. If the theories that I've read about uh, are accurate or if I'm reading them correctly, we're not extracting enough of the solubles in the coffee. So we're not pulling out all the great flavors. There's sort of this like tight bell curve um, situation where essentially you go 
there's like flavor potential, flavor potential, and then there's a specific time where you're extracting all the great stuff and then it quickly deteriorates. So you wanna try and hit that, hit that sweet spot, which will be different for every coffee, right? So you're leading up to it and if you go too short, you're not gonna get everything and you, you might get like a sour or a really bitter or just something that's punchy. But when you get to that sweet spot, we should be getting a really well-balanced um, sweet cup. But again, if you go too far, you can get the same kind of tasting experience as you get if it's too short. Not good, let's retry. One thing you also wanna do, it's called purging your group head. So you just, there's always little grounds on the, on the screen and when you're in high production, um, you just have to kind of purge it a little bit and you got, you know, this is why these scales are waterproof because this gets all wet, right? But um, there you go. So clean, hot, and dry. It's probably a little bit of water still in there, so I'm gonna zero it out again, okay? This is probably gonna be too much. Oh yeah, 19.3. So I gotta take a lot. Now one thing, that the reason you'd want to, you know, create these time things is because if you keep doing two grams over like I am here, then uh, you're gonna waste a lot of coffee and over the course of a year, you could really uh, lose money, right? So this is a method I learned about from a gentleman at La Marzocco, is this sort of rolling tamp. So you're distributing by going like this essentially in the basket. So you're really pushing it around, okay? And you don't need to do too much force here. So there's that, just clean that off there. Okay, be really gentle when you do this. You don't wanna knock it around because that can also cause channeling. So there we go, zero that out. It's looking a little better. Creme is looking really nice here. All right, that is a much better looking shot. That is exactly 40 grams at 26 seconds. So we'll see that those are the marks we're trying to hit, right? That's just the, uh, those are the marks, but that doesn't mean that the, that the shot is necessarily going to be good. So there we go. A little bit of crema. This is also a wider uh, um, drink. It's narrow down here and then wider up top. So it does look like the crema is a little shallower, but this is pretty fresh coffee. All right, so now we're trying that drink, which was 17.5 grams of coffee, 40 grams uh, finished weight, and then uh, 26 seconds. So I added six seconds. I didn't change anything with the grinder. I believe it was that roll tamp. I think there was a distribution issue um, uh, in the previous shot. Well, it's still not tremendous. I think there's still some sweetness we probably could take out of it. Again, I'm learning though. So maybe this is kind of what it is, but, it, but, but that, um, that acidic punch I was tasting earlier has now presented itself as almost like a citrus, like lime. It's a northern region Peruvian, so that, that kind of tracks, that, 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 that seems to compute here. I would buy and drink this, for sure. It's good though, it's good. I'm gonna try just one other thing, maybe try and slow this, uh, this shot down. I'm gonna do that by just upping the dose a tad. So I'm gonna to go to 18 grams and still try and hit 40 grams out and then uh, keep, keep the grind at the same time and, and, and see if we can lengthen that, that, that shot a bit. See what happens. Still gonna roll tamp. It's okay. Mm. 
about a 10 second pre-infusion where it just hasn't quite come out of the spouts yet. So that looks kind of nice. <clears throat> it's definitely a longer shot. Let's see if it's too long. 25 seconds. All right, so about exactly the right numbers and it's a significantly longer shot. So the numbers on this are 18 grams of coffee, 40 grams of water. Uh, so that's that uh, in increased dose of about half a gram. And same tamp weight from what I thought, uh, didn't seem like any channeling, so perhaps it was a pretty even tamp after all. Same grind setting, but the time it took was actually 34 seconds. It seems like a significant increase just based on 0.5 grams, but you know, who knows? Let's see what happens. It smells quite nice. So interestingly, we are getting some, there's a quite a, a, quite a present bite right at the beginning a little bit of citrus, similar to the first shot we pulled, which was too sour. But here's, what, here's what's interesting. You got that kind of acidic front, tastes a little bit, a little bit woody, a little bit like plant material, but then it rests with quite a nice perspective. So probably what I might do is try and maybe shorten that with that same dose and ratio and shorten it a tad. I, I'd maybe increase this grind. That might be a really interesting thing. I'm just wondering if I can get rid of that kind of plant material taste, that woody taste, as well as the um, that super hard hitting bite. Let's do one more. Well, all right, uh, I did end up pulling that fourth shot, but of course my camera died, so we missed all that material. Just to recap, basically what happened is I did 18 in, uh, uh, 18 gram dose of coffee. I had about 42 grams of water out or finished drink, and it took about 24 seconds. I did make a little mi micro adjustment here, a little coarser. Um, seems like potentially that that amount of adjustment probably does not equate such a large uh, change from 34 seconds to 25 seconds. Um, so basically my assumption is I, I'm still working on distribution and tamping, um, but from a flavor perspective, that 25 second mark, uh, somewhere around there with this Northern grown Peruvian um, with about a one to one to two point two to 2.3 um, with an 18, 17 and a half to 18 gram dose, really quite nice. Uh, a little citrus, um, a little slightly floral, I'll even say, uh, sweet, well-balanced, mellow, some little citrus bite to it, um, but quite enjoyable. So what are our takeaways from this video? What I'm not trying to do is tell you that I'm an expert in espresso. In fact, the, the, the opposite. I am learning, and by the time we open, uh, we will have a great program. I'm, I'm practicing every single day, and what better time than during the pandemic quarantine than to practice our espresso. So uh, by, by the time the coffee bar opens, we will have some fantastic single origin espresso experiences for you when you come. Um, but I just wanted to make this video to kind of give you an inside look on what it's like to be learning uh, and, and experiencing that um, development process for uh, an, an espresso drink, um, specifically just an espresso shot. But I hope this video showed you that no matter what happens with your, your espresso shot, things can be learned from that experience. Um, if you liked this video, please click like and then subscribe to our channel. We produce videos about all sorts of things related to coffee and we're going to keep doing it. And 
check out our coffee bar. If you're seeing this prior to November, mid-November, mid it is about to open. And if you're watching this after mid-November of 2020, come over to the SK Coffee Bar at the Vandalia Tower in St. Paul. Thanks so much for watching. See you soon.